In this video, I'm going to talk through some of the ways we can validate a k-means cluster analysis and determine what the appropriate number of clusters uh, is that should be extracted. All right, so let's go do a k-means cluster analysis. Let's see, classify k-means. I'm just going to reset all of this. Okay, I'm going to cluster based on these standardized values here, calories, total fat, and sodium. And I'm going to iterate 10 times. Convergence criterion is zero, continue. I'm going to save, nothing. And options, I want to look at the ANOVA table. Continue. How many clusters? Well, let's start with two and then move our way up. In general, for most clustering exercises, it obviously depends on your data, but for most clustering exercises, somewhere between two and five clusters is, is usually ideal, easiest to theorize about. Two is probably too simplistic. Five um, may be getting complex, but is not too complex. Three, four, and five tend to be good theoretical numbers of clusters. Of course, again, this depends on your data. If you're classifying customers, for example, and you have 200,000 rows of data, you might end up with more than a dozen meaningful clusters. But for most cases, uh, two to five is, or three to five ideally, is most ideal, uh, or most interpretable. So I'll hit OK with two clusters. And here's what we get. Let me show you a few, let me point out a few things. The iteration history, I want you to pay attention to this. What this does is it tries to cluster, and on each iteration, it shifts things around a little bit, and the cluster centers um, change less and less and less over time. Now, you can see that even after the 10th iteration, they're still changing, and this is an indication that the clusters, this clustering model is not really stable. Um, if these were zeros, then we could say, ah, oh, yeah, it's stabilized, but they aren't, so maybe two isn't the best approach. Another thing we can look at is this ANOVA table. And we can see that the F statistics are very large. The, C, the SIG or p-value is very small. So at least for these three variables, which we use to cluster, um, they are significantly different in terms of their averages uh, between clusters. So for cluster 1 and cluster 2, they have a significantly different number of calories. One way we can look at this is if we go to the final cluster centers, double click it, select all that, right click, create graph, bar, and here they are. Here's cluster 1, here's cluster 2, and you can see that on a standardized scale, um, cluster 1 has the high values and cluster 2 has the low values, so they are significantly different. So that's one approach. You can also look at the number of clusters, or cases, excuse me, in each cluster. Sorry, that's kind of small there. But you can see in cluster 1 we have 64, in cluster 2 we have about double that at 126. So those are both uh, goodly sized clusters. Let's run this again, k-means, and I'm just going to bump this up to 3. Again, let's look at this iteration history. Look at this, we did converge at zero change after only six iterations, whereas you may remember last time we had, let's see, here's the iteration history. Even after 10 iterations, we were still changing. When it comes to three clusters, we're able to converge at zero change after six iterations. So that's pretty good sign that three clusters is a good, strong, stable cluster solution. Again, we could look at the... Uh, Cluster centers, graph them, and I can just tell you they are different. If you look at this F statistic, very strong. P-values are significant. Now, we have a very small cluster, 14. That doesn't mean it's not meaningful. It just might be underrepresented. Um, the other two clusters are of good appropriate size. Let's try twice more. Let's go to 4. Hit OK. Go to the convergence history here, um, iteration history. These did converge after seven, so it took a little bit longer, but there are more clusters, so that's fine. Um, and again, the p-values are significant on the ANOVA table. And we see that we have two nicely sized clusters here, 90 and 78, and then two smaller clusters. Is this bad? Well, nine is a pretty small number, but again, this might just be an underrepresented cluster. Let's do one more time at five. Five. Okay, 
And I'll show you why more than five starts getting squirrely. Uh, first, let's look at this iteration history. Look, we're still seeing changes after 10 iterations um, in both cluster two and three. So maybe five isn't the best solution. So three and four looks pretty good. We look at the SIG values, they're looking good, although the sodium value is dropped significantly. I shouldn't use the word significantly, it's dropped substantially uh, from what we saw in the others. If I jump here, the F is 90, the F is 101, the F is 154. So this is definitely the lowest F value, but still significant. And you can see we have a cluster of seven. Uh, that's pretty small, um, but again, might just be underrepresented. But let me show you why getting more and more clusters um, becomes maybe a little bit more squirrely. If you double click the final cluster centers, create a little graph out of this. There you go, create graph, bar. Let's go to sodium. Sodium is the tan color. The question is, is this bar here significantly different from this bar here and this bar here? Clearly this bar and this bar are significantly different from all the rest. But these three on clusters one, three, and four, those are pretty similar, especially between clusters one and three. So are the cluster centers different for those two on sodium? E probably not. Here's a way to know for sure. Let's take, let's see, let's do this five cluster solution again, but we're going to save a cluster membership number. Hit continue, hit OK. It's going to run it. And now I'm going to go run an ANOVA. There we go. Difference of means test. Where are you? Where'd they go? Here we go. Compare means, one way ANOVA. And it is actually these three variables. So taking the three variables that we use to cluster, I'm going to use those. And then the factoring variable is going to be this cluster membership number. So what this is going to do is it's going to compare. Uh, each cluster, and it's going to look at the means for each of these variables and see if each cluster is different. Now, the way to know if uh, cluster 1 is different from cluster 4 or 3 or 2 is to do a post hoc test, and you can either do a Bonferroni's or a Tukey's. Honestly, a lot of these do the exact same thing. I've run uh, Tukey's and Bonferroni's, and they come up with literally identical to eight decimal points uh, results. So I'm just going to run a Bonferroni's. It happens to be my favorite. Hit continue and OK, and you get this multiple comparisons graph, chart, table, that's what I'm looking for, table. And what this says is for calories, for cluster 1 compared to clusters 2, 3, 4, and 5, or for cluster 2 compared to clusters 1, 3, 4, and 5, are they on calories significantly different? The answer is yes. Yeah, ooh, ooh, here's the p-value. So difference between cluster 2 and cluster 3, not significantly different. Now, if we go back to that bar chart we created, so on calories, cluster 2 and cluster 3, yeah, look at that. The blue, not very different. We also talked about the sodium on clusters 1 and 3. So let's go back down here, and let's go to sodium, which is down here, clusters 1 and 3, and look at that, not significantly different. So this is another way to validate whether you've extracted the right number of clusters. If you see that all p-values are significant, then you can say with confidence we have a strong stable cluster uh, model and also back this up with that iteration history where you see zero changes after a certain number of iterations in this case it's not a good model but if i go back to the three cluster solution again we have zero changes after six iterations so this is a good strong stable structure let me go ahead and show you one more time in, um not the anova cancel um, cancel Let's do the k-means. Let's set it back to 3, which is, was a good model. And we're saving the cluster membership number. Hit OK. And then go rerun that ANOVA. Not with this cluster membership, but with this one, the most recent one. Doing a post hoc Bonferroni's. And we'll see in this multiple comparisons table that every pairwise comparison is significantly different. Um, we get close. Close is not really. It's 0 0.001. Uh, but between clusters 1 and 3 on sodium, let me just go double check that, go back to final cluster centers. Let's see here they are, double click it, graph all this, create graph bar, and it said clusters 1 and 3 on sodium. Yeah, those are getting close, but clearly we have high, medium, low here. Um, so they're still significantly different, jumping back to that uh, postdoc on Veronese. 
So again, this is a way to validate that the number of clusters you extracted is both stable and um, meaningful and shows significant differences between all clustering variables. Hope that helps.